Hello and welcome to Baking Butterly Love. My name is Katie and in this video I'm going to show you how to level your cake layers, then stack, crumb coat, and frost them with buttercream frosting. In this video I'll be frosting a 3 layer 6 inch cake with Swiss meringue buttercream. You can find the recipe for my Swiss meringue buttercream linked in the description below. Alright, so to start off, when making a layer cake, it's really important that each layer is level. So if your cake layers are not flat on top, you'll want to trim them down. This is usually easier to do if the cake layers are chilled. There are ways to bake flatter cake layers, but honestly, I like having the scraps to snack on, so I'm not too worried about it. I use a long serrated knife to trim my cake layers. And what I do is I go around the edge just once to sort of score a cut around the outside, just focusing on keeping that level. Then I gradually work my way towards the center and um, follow that original score line so that I can make sure the cut stays even. And if you don't get it perfect the first time, no worries, you can always go back and clean it up like I'm doing here. All right, so now it's time to stack the cake. I'm using a turntable with a non-slip mat, and I'm also using a cardboard cake circle the same size as my cake as a base. That way I can slip a spatula underneath the cardboard later to transfer the cake without messing anything up. I used parchment paper in my pans to keep the cakes from sticking, so I'll make sure to peel that off, then place the first layer onto my cake circle. If you are worried about the cake slipping around, you could also spread a little buttercream down first. I like to use a cookie scoop to get an even amount of frosting between my layers. I'm using a one ounce scoop here, so I'm gonna do about four ounces between each layer. You can adjust and make this thicker or thinner to your preference. Just keep in mind that if you do too much frosting, um, the layers are probably gonna end up sliding around a bit and the filling might start to ooze out, so you definitely don't wanna overdo it. I'm using a small offset spatula to spread the frosting. When you use a spatula like this, you want to hold it almost flat rather than at an angle. And make sure you bring the frosting all the way out to the edges, and again, keep this layer as level as possible. When you go to add the second layer of cake, look at it from the top down to make sure that it's centered over the first layer. Then press down gently but firmly to make sure everything is even and to help push out any air pockets. Repeat frosting and filling the same way onto the next layer. When you get to the final cake layer, place the bottom side up so that you get a perfectly flat top for your cake. After your layers are stacked, the next step is to crumb coat the cake. For this step, you'll want to have an extra small bowl for scraping off your spatula so that you don't get any crumbs into your extra frosting. The crumb coat is only a very thin layer of frosting and its purpose is, like it sounds, just to seal in all the crumbs. After you crumb coat the cake, you're going to refrigerate it until that layer of frosting is firm. That way, when you go to apply the final layer of frosting, you won't pick up any crumbs. To apply the crumb coat, I like to start off with a blob of frosting right on top of the cake. Then I slowly spread it out and down the sides using small back and forth motions. You can use the excess frosting that you've already scraped off to fill in any gaps. Just be sure not to stick your spatula back into the clean frosting. It's perfectly okay if you can see the cake through the crumb coat. Even a very thin layer is going to be enough to trap in crumbs. Before you place the cake in the fridge, it's a good idea to make sure all the layers are properly aligned. So if you spin the cake around and see it leaning in any direction, you can gently push the layers back in place. After the cake is chilled, the layers will be set and you won't be able to do this anymore. The crumb coat doesn't need to be perfect, but keeping it fairly smooth is a good idea because it'll make it easier to apply the final layer of frosting. After the crumb coat is finished, you'll want to chill your cake in the fridge for about an hour. This gives the crumb coat time to firm up and also allows the cake to settle, which is going to prevent any air bubbles from bulging out later on. Once the cake is crumb coated and chilled, it's ready for whichever frosting technique you'd like to use. I'm gonna give this cake a smooth coat of frosting using my offset spatula, which I've cleaned off, and also a cake scraper. 
I'm going to apply this last layer of frosting the same way I did the crumb coat, just with a lot more frosting. You'll notice I also placed the cake on a larger cake board, and that's just so I have a smooth surface to scrape against. So once I have the frosting fairly even with my spatula, I'm going to switch to using my cake scraper. Getting smooth sides with a scraper takes practice, but the most important things are to make sure that you're holding it at the proper angle and that you're spinning the turntable confidently with long turns rather than using short movements. So just like with the offset spatula, you don't wanna hold the scraper at a harsh angle. Instead, you want to hold it almost flat against the cake. Then, while gently pressing the scraper, I'll grab the turntable from the opposite side. This allows me to spin it completely around in one smooth motion. You can see how I took the turntable around 360 degrees before stopping. You can go back and fill in any empty patches with extra buttercream, then scrape them smooth again. It'll take several passes around the cake to get the frosting completely smooth. Make sure that you clean off your scraper between every pass. Then to finish off the top of the cake, pull the frosting from the outer edges towards the center with your offset spatula. Finally, clean off the edges around the bottom of the cake. Now that the cake is coated in a smooth layer of buttercream, it's basically a blank canvas for whatever decorating technique you'd like to use. If you are going to do anything that would push into the buttercream a lot, it's a good idea to chill the cake again before moving on to any more decorating. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel for more cake decorating tips and tutorials.